Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carol and I'm so glad that you stopped by. I hope you will consider subscribing, like and share my videos and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today's my first video of 2022. I apologize for the delay in getting a video up for you, but things have been crazy. We had the holidays and had family in town then, and then we took a vacation and my husband and I have been kind of under the weather since we got back from vacation. So anyway, we're getting everything back to normal. So this is my first video of the year. I hope your year has gotten off to a great start and you're ready to get into some delicious recipes. I have lots of great canning recipes for you and some other fun stuff. So stay tuned. So today we are going to be canning up beef stew. Now this is by request. I have lots of people ask me for a beef stew recipe and you can readily find uh, beef stew recipes that are safe for canning in several different places uh, from trusted sources. We're going to be using the one from the Ball Fresh Preserving website. Um, it's called Easy Beef Stew. You can also find the recipe in the Complete Book of Home Preserving by Ball or in the Ball Blue Book. In these two books they are referring to it as beef stew with vegetables. Um, but on the Fresh Preserving website, it's just called Easy Beef Stew and it is really easy and this would be a perfect place to start if you are a beginner canner. It is a simple recipe, it has just basic ingredients and it would be a great way to get your feet wet and have something really yummy on your shelf to enjoy. So if you're new to canning, this is going to be a good one. The reason why I like the way that it's written on the Ball Fresh Preserving website, and I will leave a link to it in the description box below, is they give you the full recipe and then they also do the math for you and give you a half recipe. I'm going to be doing a half recipe. I'm going to be canning in pint jars. You can can this in pints or quarts. I'm going to be canning in pints. I don't need a ton of it. So I'm going to do the half recipe. The ingredients are the same, it's just the amounts have changed. And of course, I'm going to do a little bit of a Carol twist. Um, so to get started, your ingredients, like I said, are very, are a very basic beef stew. You need two to two and a half pounds of stew meat. Again, I'm doing the half recipe and in the description box below, I will list the full recipe, the full amounts, and then I will also list what I'm making the half recipe. So we need two to two and a half pounds of stew meat cut into one and one half inch cubes. You need one and a half teaspoons of vegetable oil. This recipe calls for browning your meat, which is totally safe um, to do with oil in a tested recipe. So they've given us the same amount of oil to use. That's what we're gonna use. And so it is safe to do that. Typically, you do not want to add oil to things that you can unless it is a tested recipe. So um, it is safe to add the oil here. You never want to add any fat if you, unless it, like I said, it is a tested recipe. Um, and that's just kind of a little FYI for you beginners. We need six cups of cubed and peeled potatoes. That's about six medium potatoes. You need four cups of sliced carrots. Those should also be peeled. Just FYI for those of you who are new to canning, any root vegetable should be peeled before being canned to uh, reduce the risk of botulism. So you wanna make sure your carrots and your potatoes are peeled. We need one and a half cups of chopped celery, one and a half cups of chopped onion, they are calling for three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna be using a teaspoon of seasoned salt, um, but you can use whatever you prefer. I like seasoned salt, it has other seasonings in it obviously, and it, adds, it boosts the flavor a little bit. Um, half a teaspoon of dried thyme. I like thyme in my beef stew, so I think I'm gonna use a full teaspoon of dried thyme. Quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, I'll use about probably a half teaspoon of pepper. I like my food a little more seasoned than what they're calling for here. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna add that is not in the recipe is I'm gonna be adding some dried parsley. It's totally fine to add any dried spices that you uh, enjoy to any canning recipe. So if you wanna change up the flavor, adding dried spices is very safe to do and a great way to change things up to meet your palate. And then they are saying to cover all of it with water. I am going to be using beef stock instead. Um, you could use beef stock 
um, or what I'm at technically what I'm using is I'm going to be using reconstituted better than bullion I love canning with this you guys this adds tons of flavor just know that it is salty so you might want to take care to um, about how much salt you're adding in addition to using this so um, I'm reconstituting this. This is the organic one. It doesn't have anything in it that's not safe for canning. So I'm reconstituting this and I'm going to be using this as stock instead of the water that it calls for. But you could use water in this recipe. You could use some other beef stock that you have on hand. It's entirely up to you. Beef stock will obviously add more flavor, which is why I'm using it instead of water. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to brown our meat. Then we're going to add our vegetables and our seasonings. We're going to cover it with our boiling stock and bring the whole thing up to a boil and then we're set for canning. So like I said, this recipe is perfect for those of you who are new and just getting your feet wet with pressure canning. Uh, this is a pressure canning recipe. This is all low acid ingredients, so you must pressure can this. You cannot water bath can this recipe. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm going to be canning in pints, but you can also can this in quarts. So I'm going to bring you in close and we're going to get started. Okay guys, here we go. I have a large stock pot um, that I have preheated. I have one and a half teaspoons of oil in my pot. That's for the half recipe. And we're going to go ahead and add our beef just to brown it. I do have my temperature set on a medium high heat. I just want to note that you want to try to cut off as much extra fat as possible. Stew meat tends to be fatty. It usually is chuck um, that is considered stew meat. So make sure you uh, remove as much extra fat as you can. Obviously, there's still going to be some there because of the cut of the meat that it is. So we're just going to brown this on all sides. Okay, guys, our meat is fully browned. So now we are ready to throw everything else in our sauce pot cover it with our stock and then bring it all up to a boil and then we're set for canning. So we're going to add six cups of diced potatoes, four cups of sliced carrots, a cup and a half of chopped celery and a cup and a half of chopped onion. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of seasoned salt, about a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, a teaspoon of dried thyme, and about a teaspoon of dried parsley flakes. But your seasonings all to, are all to your taste. And then we're gonna cover it all with our stock or water, whichever one you're using. Now, Ball does not give a specific amount of liquid to use, uh, so I prepared two quarts of um, stock um, so that is what I've used here and that is plenty to cover everything. So what we're gonna do now is just give this a stir and then bring the whole thing up to a boil and then we are all set for canning. Okay guys, I took, brought my stew up to a boil just like the instructions said. Um, so now we're ready for canning. I do have three quarts of Simmerine water in my canner per my canner's instructions. My rack is also in there. Uh, modern canning guidelines state that we do not need to pre-sterilize jars or lids as long as we are canning for 10 minutes or more. And we are going to be canning, obviously, for more than 10 minutes. So I just washed my jars and I'm keeping them hot in a sink full of hot water. Uh, my lids, I washed and rinsed them well and I've set them aside. So we are all set to go. All right, so I'm gonna start with two hot jars and we're going to ladle in our stew to a one inch headspace. Okay, once you get your stew into one inch headspace, you're going to take a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife or chopstick to release your air bubbles. So just poke around your jar. Make sure you have enough liquid in your jar that it does cover your veggies and your meat. If your headspace changes, uh, once you have released your air bubbles, you can adjust it. I think this jar could use a little bit more to maintain the one inch. Then we're going to take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar to clean our rims. 
We don't want anything to interfere with a good seal. Then we're going to center our lids and then add our bands to fingertip tight. And then in the canner they go. Okay, I did end up with eight pint jars. I have some left over. So this recipe, their half, what they're calling it, is gonna make about eight to 10 pint jars. Now, something I did want to mention is I, sometimes I also add some additional seasonings and I will leave um, that information for you in the description box. Sometimes I'll do a dash of Worcestershire, sometimes some kitchen bouquet. I did uh, add a teaspoon of garlic powder. Again, that, that is a dried spice, so it's safe to use. Kitchen bouquet and Worcestershire are also okay to use, um, but you can always doctor it up once you open a jar. So don't always feel like you have to uh, make it taste perfect before canning it because the flavor does change a little bit as you as it goes through the canning process and as it sits on your shelf. So as long as it tastes good to you, just know that you can always doctor it up when you open a jar. I also wanted to say that I will leave instructions for how I thicken mine up when I open a jar. I like my beef stew to be on the thicker side as opposed to being brothy. Um, so I will leave instructions on how I do that when I open a jar. We cannot add thickeners prior to canning. So um, I have my jars, my canners full. I'm going to take the rest of my white vinegar and pour it into my canning water. That just helps to keep your jars nice and clean during the canning process. Uh, for those of you who are new, sometimes there are minerals in our water that like to collect on the outside of the jar and it's hard to remove once they're on there. So if you add a couple of tablespoons of white vinegar to your canning water, it prevents that from happening. So we're going to go ahead and add our lid. Uh, for the all-american canner you line up the notch with the arrow you want your lid fairly even on all sides and then you tighten your thumb screws two at a time opposites and then i'm going to crank up my heat to a nice medium high to high we want to vent our canner for 10 minutes which means we want to see a steady stream of steam coming out of our vent for 10 minutes once that happens we can go ahead and add our weight and wait for it to start rocking and rolling and then we can start our processing time okay we've been venting for 10 minutes so now it's for time for me to add my weight just a quick word about venting for those of you who are new in my canning group the question has come up or the issue has come up about running out of water or almost running out of water in your canner uh, by the time your time your processing time is over one of the things that can contribute to that is if you let it vent too long we do want to let it vent fully for 10 minutes but you don't want to go beyond that so as soon as you start seeing a stream of steam um, come out of your vent make sure you start um, timing then and you should let that happen for 10 minutes so now we are ready to add our weight I'm going to be processing at 10 psi you need to adjust for altitude so make sure you know your altitude so I'm going to put my weight on at 10 psi we are going to bring it up to a pressure at that point it will start my weight will start rocking for those of you who have a dial gauge canner you're going to be processing at 11 psi so once we get there i'll bring you back the like i said my weight will start rocking and then we want to process for 75 minutes i'm canning in pints if you are canning in quarts you are going to be processing for 90 minutes um, the other thing i wanted to mention is earlier i think i said that I had three quarts of simmering water in the bottom of my canner. It should be two to three inches. I'm, my brain's not working today. Um, three quarts is what I use in my steam canner. So you want three, two to three inches of simmering water in the bottom of your canner for pressure canning. I just wanted to make that correction. So once we start rocking and rolling, I'll bring you back. Okay, my weight is starting to rock so I can start my processing time. So I'm going to set my timer for 75 minutes. Again, if you're processing in quartz, your processing time is 90 minutes. Once your weight starts rocking you or you've reached 11 PSI on a dial gauge canner, you want to slowly adjust your heat just to maintain 11 PSI or the rocking of your weight. Um, you don't want quick temperature fluctuations in your canner that can cause siphoning, so slowly reduce your heat just to maintain. For your weight, 
depending on your canner, for the All-American canner, your weight should rock about one to three times a minute. So that's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna reduce my heat, process for 75 minutes, and then I will bring you back. Okay guys, we are all finished. Um, like I said, I processed for 75 minutes. Once my, once my time was up, I turned my canner off, um, let it return to zero pressure naturally, and then um, once it got to zero pressure, waited a few minutes, took my weight off, waited about another five minutes or so, removed my lid, and then I've let my jar sit an additional, about an additional 10 minutes in the canner. So there, they are starting to cool, but there you go. Delicious, beautiful, tasty beef stew. Um, to thicken it, uh, and I'll leave this in the description box because I like my stew to have some body to it. So when I open a jar, I will empty out the liquid into a saucepan, add about a teaspoon or so of cornstarch, whisk that in, um, heat that until it starts to thicken and bubble a little bit, and then I will add the veggies and the meat into that and then that'll thicken it for me and it'll give me a nice hearty stew but that's how i do it there are other ways to do it but you can give that a try as always i appreciate you coming along with me um, again if you are a beginner this is a great place to start if you have any comments or questions for me leave them for me in the comment section don't forget to like subscribe and share it, and i will see you next time have a fabulous day